Hello Real Life Youth, it's Melanie here and I'm excited to talk to you today about our brand new Christmas series called Love Came Down and you get me for this week, it's week one, actually you get me for next week as well, but it's week one of Love Came Down and it's Love Came Down to a Stable. Week two is Love Came Down to Bethlehem, that's next week, and we're going to meet on Zoom for that. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the promises over Bethlehem and what that means for us today, which will be really exciting. It'll be so lovely to see you all. So that's 11am next week. And then the following week is Love Came Down to the Whole World, and we're actually just going to take our message out there. So on the Saturday, the 19th, we've got a scavenger hunt, and we'll be out and about in Sutton. And then on the 20th, we've got our doorstep carols so we're going to take this love and we're going to take it to our streets we're going to take it into our park we're we're just going to um, share this love spread this love talk about this love post it on social media we're just going to take it out there so this week is love came down to a stable so I, I bought my nativity scene to show you so that's my stable and you've got uh, baby Jesus in there, Mary and Joseph, you've got some wise men, you've got a shepherd and you've got a classic kind of stable outline. So I want to read to you, if that's okay, I want to read to you from Luke 2. You can find the Christmas story at the start of Luke and at the start of Matthew as well. It's well worth reading over this time. So Luke 2 says this, at that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. Then I'm going to stick, skip on to four. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He travelled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee and he took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and she laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Now in biblical times most families would have lived in the kind of a single room house with a lower compartment for the animals and that would be what we would understand to be the stable. So you'd walk in at ground level there'd be like a, a lower area that was covered in straw and you kept all your animals there and then you took some stairs and you went upstairs to to kind of like a mezzanine kind of flooring over looking that where you'd where you'd have your beds and where you'd sleep and where you'd kind of do your life so when we think about Jesus being born in the stable or no room for them at the inn or it, that's what we're actually talking about we're talking about a kind of ground level where all the animals were and all the stores were and then the family or the guests or whoever lived above it so it's likely that it wouldn't have been a separate kind of stable out back with its own kind of you know roof doors all of that it would have just been part of the household and so I just want to today make some observations about the stable really just want to talk about uh, what it means for us today so my first observation is this the innkeeper made room even though but what it, what most of them are saying is we've got no room we've got no room we've got no room there was one who made room and and um, because they made room God may do and I think we don't often like thinking of God making do but actually God did make do because one man said okay you can have this space in this house and in my life and I think God is like that I think if you are a person that says God I'll make room for you I'll make space he will come straight in and he will make do with whatever room you are prepared to give him I would thoroughly recommend giving him all the space you can because like a God who comes in and, and, and makes do of all the space that you've got is it, just, oh, I, I think that's the best life live. My second observation is look at who's in the house. Look at who's in there with Jesus. So you've got Mary, you've got Joseph, you've got the wise men, you've got the shepherds. You've got young, you've got old, you've got men, you've got women, you've got highly educated, you've got the outcast. You've literally got this snapshot of, of most of society stood 
in the stable. I don't think that's any accident. What God says loud and clearly is whoever you are, you're welcome. So you make room for me and I'll make room for you. I'll, I'll open up my love to reach out to anyone. Young, old, rich, poor, educated, working class, the outcast, those who are highly revered, those who are so low, the young. Oh man, like God just loves the young. And then my last observation is Jesus came as one of us. The Bible calls him Emmanuel, God with us, or Emmanuel, God is one of us. And I think that's beautiful in the Christmas story. It means we can relate to God. It means we can go to God. It means he, he can relate to us. It is incredible. So make room for Jesus this season. Make as much room as you can and he will make do with whatever room you're prepared to give him. Understand this, real life youth, that whoever you are, you're welcome in the stable, you're welcoming God's presence. And then lastly, God is one of us. So go to him with whatever you've got. My challenge for you this Christmas time is do something to make room for Jesus. Read your Bible, sing some carols, do something to make room for him in your life. Tell him, talk to him, say to him, I'm making room for you, God. And I know he will make do with whatever you offer. Real Life Youth, I will see you next week on Zoom. Take care. Bye-bye.